Hey everybody, it's Sin Freak here, and the awesome Yamaha Kia with one sequencer. The sequencer has 8 MIDI outs, a MIDI in, and a 3 port. This has 8 tracks, and has a 5 inch floppy disk drive that can cause a lot of problems uh, for most units, including my own. Uh, this is my second QS1 that I've had. Um, my first one had the very same issue with the disk drive. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the common problem you can have with the disk drive, and then I'll move on to the HXC uh, demonstration. Alright, I'll be making a second video on how to install the HXC um, shortly. Alrighty. So first off, I'm going to show you the original disk drive that came in this unit. This lovely thing. This is about, I'd say about two and a half pounds, two pounds. It's definitely a hefty. It definitely adds some weight to the uh, QS1. I don't know if you can hear that. This is what spins uh, when you turn it on. It's actually quite noisy. Um, if you're in a studio setting or if you're outside uh, playing a live show, uh, you really don't hear it very often, but if you're in a quiet room, you definitely will hear it um, waltzing. So, that's one little thing that some people can notice. Um, if you decide to change your disk drive over to the HXC, um, this is how the disk drive will be inside the unit. And right now, because it's not in there, I'll show you where it used to be. This is where uh, the disk drive used to be. Right there underneath the cover. And you'd obviously insert the disk here, adjust the disk there. A lot of times, the problem you'll have in some of these older units is the disk drive not ejecting the disk or locking in place, or just not locking the disk at all and never locking it. If it's not locked like this, you cannot obviously use it. It will not read it because it will not be held down. The read and write heads here will not be held down enough to actually touch the media surface. Other floppy disk to be able to read it. Okay, this is what it should be doing. It should be locking in place pretty nicely. This little hinge here, that's what it should have done, but it didn't because this this little wire is bent. Um, there is a copper ramp. I'm not sure if the camera is focusing on that or not for you to be able to see it. Uh, and a very very thin spring-like uh, metal wire that just kind of crosses that ramp at the very top crest of the ramp. Um, when you insert the disc, the mechanism actually depresses the copper ramp and the wire is supposed to jump over the ramp and then once it locks in place, the ramp comes back up and the wire is supposed to move down a little bit but not cross it. Um, by doing so, lock the disc in place and miraculously it actually ejected it this time. Most of the time it will not and it will lock in place. Uh, in, in order to fix that little issue, you'd have to go in there and bend the wire very, very, very carefully to make it actually jump over the ramp successfully. And see, even by the way that sounds, I know it didn't do it right. It should have made this sound. Should have done that. So that copper wire, copper ramp should have uh, forced the wire, wire to go over it, but it didn't. So, what I had to do with my unit because I actually got my disk drive to work a few times. Uh, this is how it will be inside the QX. So you'd actually have to line up the hole exactly and use like a toothpick or something plastic and real thin to actually shove the ramp down and make and force that metal wire to release over that ramp to release the disk. So then you push the center, it comes out, and then all will be good. All right. So, that, that can be a, a problem for some people. Um, another problem that I had with my particular unit, I'm not sure if anybody else has had this problem or not, is the carriage right here that holds the reading and writing mechanism of the disk drive not moving at all. As I didn't know much about floppy drives, especially a uh, 5 inch floppy disk, uh, a floppy drive like this uh, before, I thought it was supposed to be that way. Um, I obviously know now that it's supposed to move uh, up and down as the diskette is being read the sectors. And what this cartridge here will do is move up and down this medium here. 
from the bottom to the top, from the top to the bottom, to access the material as it spins. This little hole right there is a seek hole. So it's actually looking for a certain part of the disc that also has a hole in it. It's not sure if you can see through that or not. But once it finds it, then it knows that uh, a certain track. Uh, so it lines up. Don't want to get too technical with that, so I'll leave it at that. But anyways, um, on my unit here, in order to get the carriage to move up and down like it should and move this little round uh, portion here, <coughs> I had to actually clean the rods first because they were actually just covered in dust and dirt and all that from age. Another thing I had to do was actually clean these rods and put a special kind of oil uh, from this pin here. I got this from Radio Shack. And it's kind of like an oil, like it's a little bit thicker than oil, but it's not as thick as grease would be. Uh, grease is way too thick, I've tried both. Uh, the grease um, just collects more dust and locks the drive up even more. Doesn't help it. This seems to be the only thing that works as far as getting my disk drive to run again. <coughs> Alright. So once you do that and clean the uh, rods here, um, they will work most of the time. Um, if you do have that problem and if you notice that your disk drive uh, just needs to be cleaned, which is the best option is to try and see if you can clean it first and get it working. Uh, all that needs to be done here is to remove the copper tab, the one here, and one down here by this uh, motor here. Alright, so there's one at each end. You unscrew those, take them off. Then this rod here can be popped out sideways. You just pull it down just like that and it will exit this opening here. This one here cannot be pulled to the side, it has to be moved up this way. Alright, and once you do that, it's actually best uh, that I found is to at least leave one of the rods in there while you're cleaning the other so that the carriage here that would be reading the disc does not sink in. It won't damage it, but it's just a little safer to have it uh, where it doesn't fall in up, up under here there. All right. That's what I had to do with my disk drive. Uh, it was kind of a pain because every time I wanted to use my QS1, I'd actually clean these rods again, put more oil on there, and hope that it catches, and then once it caught and started spinning this here, then it would work. So not exactly time saving at all. Uh, not productive either. And uh, not exactly reliable, but it made it work for a little while. So. There's actually another remedy to this problem. <coughs> if you cannot repair the disk drive, uh, another option is to uh, look into a HXC, floppy drive emulator, and I'll show you how it works. Alright, so I'm going to power up my QS1, and you'll hear a beep tone, and then you'll see a couple of green lights here with data uh, from a song that I recorded. And there we are. QS1 is ready to go. It powers up and is ready to go just as quick as the QS3 almost. Um, it probably takes one more second of time than the QS3. Uh, here's some song data here. In this mode, it's really not. Uh, you can't just press run and you know let it play. Um, this is the reason why they have it this way, so that in this play mode, instead of song mode, as the QS3 has it, you can actually use the arrow immediately and find your song. You don't have to open the disk, you don't have to do anything. I mean, the image of the disk is actually open, but you don't have to search uh, by opening it first. You just, it's already open. Okay? So this song here was originally intended for the Jupiter 8, D50, and the Juno. Track 1, 2, and 3. MIDI channel 1, 2, and 3 back here. There is 8. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tower this down. Uh, I'll be going into a little more detail on the QS1, uh, how you operate it and everything else in another video. Um, I've also tried using several different makes and models of keyboards. So I have CZ5000 right here from Casio, uh, CG for Rated by Roland, C50 by Roland, EMU EMXSE, uh, Yamaha DX7. They all work perfectly fine uh, because of MIDI. So, 
no problems there with any issues with the instrument ID, manufacturer IDs, or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. It's best that you unplug your unit uh, before you open this up, but for the video, I'm saving time. I'm just going to go and leave it plugged in and be careful. Alright, so here's the inside of the QX. This is the top panel where all the keys are. The encoder is right here. The encoder uh, and the tempo LED and the run LED is connected to this main circuit board here. This is the command keyboard. This is the actual notation keyboard. This is the power board right here with the transformer and all that good stuff. All right. The main CPU board. And this is the HXC. Way over here in the corners. It's much smaller than the uh, floppy drive is and doesn't weigh anything pretty much. Um, what I have one setting on is a piece of packaging that a circuit board that came in in the mail um, is anti-static. So since I don't have a box or anything this, um, that I know for sure will keep static away, I just put it on this, this uh, material for now. Alright, here's the LCD, the power supply, the power adapter, uh, or the power supply adapting uh, little connector here. <coughs> so that you'll need for to make the original connector here small enough to fit the power um, source uh, connector here on the HXE. This uh, ribbon connector here is actually quite long, so what I did was just fold mine, kind of nice and neat, to keep it out of the way. So that'll kind of overhang the LCD, but I don't really refer to the LCD very much. Um, and the wire here connects over into the main board just like the original one did. All right. The popping sound you're probably hearing is the back of the QX. This that's uh, a little bit rusted back there. All right, this right here, uh, this little latch here. This can be either removed or left in place. It's actually easier to have it left there so you can hold up the unit. All right. So what I'm going to do with my QX one since I it's kind of hard to get the uh, the uh, the disc out of there with it still closed. You can actually just leave just one screw here to keep the unit uh, from actually falling open it, uh, when you move it. And then whenever you need to access it, just get a screwdriver and screw the one screw, and then you can open it up again easily, just like that. Okay, so that is a very very basic simple video on the HXC. I'll show you how to install it. Uh, shortly, and I'll show you how to record on the QS1. But with the HXC, it actually makes this totally restored as if it's a brand new unit, and you never know that it's from 1984, I believe. Um, so yeah, it's an awesome unit, and it has returned to life. Everybody have a fantastic day.